Um, you signed Josh McPake this week. Um, first of all, how delighted were you to bring him on board? Yeah, it's another one that I keep, I keep going back on this. It's one we've been working on for a while um, and we're grateful to Rangers that they're, they're trusting us with one of their, their hottest prospects and I think everybody, everybody knows the quality he's got now. Even at such a young age, he's got a, he's got a big reputation in Scottish football and I believe he'll, he'll live up to that in time. Um, but we're delighted we've got him here and, and we're looking forward to, to seeing him in a, a Dundee shop. And obviously it wasn't just yourselves that were, were after him. It must mean a lot to you to, to get him and, and have him here. Yeah, that, that that's I think that's a huge boost boost to our, our football club and it's well, there's people to thank for that as well because when we had the had the conversation with Michael Beale six weeks ago it didn't look like it was going to happen and and we, we dug in there and we he was involved in Rangers, he played in the Europa League qualifier for Rangers, so that tells you what, what they think of him. Um and we sold what we think we could we could bring um, to Josh's game what we could help him with and and in the end Rangers decided that this would be the in their opinion the best place for him to come and develop. I suppose it's a two way thing because for you he can help your uh, promotion campaign and also helps the Rangers in terms of bringing him on. Yeah, mm -hmm. look it's that's what happens with loan players and if you get them right they can be very beneficial to you. Um, but look at these He's a Rangers player, um, officially, but for the next six months at least he's, he's a Dundee player and, and we'll use him as, as best we can and, and we'll develop him and, and Rangers have been great with that so they've, they've just told us to go and, go and use him whatever way we want, um, but that's, I think that's been down to the conversation we've had and, and the, the belief that they've got what we're doing here. And your next game obviously is against Inverness, but a lot of the talk this week's been on the Derby which lies in wait next week with the tickets going on sale. It looks like it's heading for a sellout. Um, obviously Dundee don't have um, the luxury of having so many tickets, but how much do you feel your players are going to be able to cope with that? The Derby? Ask me on Monday. How much do you are you enjoying the sort of hype in terms of the build up to that game though? Because obviously it does kind of give a, a bit of a buzz around the city. Yeah, it does. Look, but but um, I'd be foolish to even be thinking about that. Of course, I know. And look at again. I'm not going to sit here and say I don't hear the hype and I don't hear it. And I know the queues were there for their tickets. I know it's going to be a sellout. But that's a derby. But we've got a massive game on Saturday. Um, so. I'm not sitting and try and kid on them. It's it's completely out of my mind. Um, I know it's coming. Like just any game, we, we do know that it's a big game. But the bigger game's coming this week, and then when we get this out the road, hopefully the performance carries on from Aberdeen, and we we get a positive result. And then from Saturday night, Sunday, leading into next Friday, then that's when we'll, we'll deal with the derby. And obviously it was disappointing at the weekend, uh, the result in the end against Aberdeen, but what have you taken from that this week uh, going into this game? Because obviously you'll be looking to get a positive result. Yeah, I was worried. Um, I think we gave the boys a Monday off because they needed something. They had worked so hard in that game and I was devastated for them and for the fans because I think we deserved to win the game over the 90 minutes. Um, no doubt about that. Um, I thought we were really good. And it was it was a hard one, a tough one for them to take. But my my worry then was in a on the Sunday and the Monday, how's the reaction going to be? And going back to is it going is it a hangover again? And we coming in and training on on Tuesday was the best session we've had. And I genuinely mean that. I'm no I'm no sitting here just saying that, but they were at it. And they were they, they just looked like they had took a lot from the game, even though we lost it. You don't want to lose games of football, but there are certain ways you can lose a game, and I, I say that over and over. Um, and as long as we can walk off that pitch with our fans being proud of us, and I'm sure they were, I know they were. Um, so I was certainly proud of my team on Sunday for 120 minutes against a very good Aberdeen side. So I think training showed me that there was no hangover, that they took the positives, and that was the most... That was the thing that made me happy the most, that I seen how positive they were on Tuesday. They were, they were no doom and gloom, 
and maybe that helped the Monday they, they got to get because of course they'd have been gutted because they'd be looking at the drawing when we should be in that but that's cup football um, and that's football in general you can be so close where we're defending a set play away if you've been in the next round but to see the reaction and training this week's been outstanding so if there's a way to lose a football match that was it but it's, it's, it's certainly still one that, that looking back we should never have lost that clearly, James, highlights the growing self-belief and self-confidence about this place. How important can those commodities be in the coming months? Massive. What, what, what we're trying to build here, I think, in, is a togetherness um, for a, from everyone. And I think the fans are buying in it as well. We've seen them. They were, they were, and that, that wasn't just the Aberdeen game. That was the United game. They were outstanding. And then going back, I can talk about it in, in that sense. The queue is for because they want to be down there when we go down there to play play the derby but they want to be here on Saturday as well and they'll come out in their numbers on Saturday like they did last Sunday and everybody's buying into it um, but I'll stress it it needs to be performances and it needs to be that level of performance now they they can accept they can accept the defeat like that Aberdeen one accept that as much as it annoys them and it hurts them you can accept it when it's in that manner when you see your, your full squad giving it absolutely everything, leaving nothing on the pitch, players digging deep, and that's what I say to the very first day, that's what I'll guarantee from my team. And it's, it's been in bits and pieces the second half of the firm when I think we've seen it, we've seen it for a long period against Air United, but Sunday was the first time I think we've seen it for for the full 120 minutes, and, and that's the levels we need to get to, and, and we get to that levels, the togetherness is there, the fans are there, then then this is going to be a real tough place to come and we're going to be a real tough out, outfit to play against. Inverness on Saturday then playing against uh, John Robertson's side. It's got all the ingredients of a, a cracking contest, hasn't it? Yeah, I think that the last one, it was 1-0 and people would say it was 1-0 was a boring game of football, but it wasn't. I think there were loads of chances. It was, it was an entertaining game. Um, and I'm sure this one will be as well. John's teams always come, they always come and attack. I know that, I've worked with them um, at Livingston. So look, we're very, very aware of what Inverness, the problems they can cause us and the problems they can cause any team in this league. So so we need to be on it. It needs to be, it can't be anything other than another massive game for us that we're, we're looking at the same way we, we were as soon as we came out for the Aberdeen game. We need to be at it for the very, very start and the work goal. Kane Hemmings, how's he? Is he back? Yeah, he's good. Yep, he trained Tuesday, um, trained today again, looking great, looking sharp, and delighted he's back in the squad. Danny Johnson scores again on Saturday, hits the post, certainly hit the ground running. Yeah, yeah, no, he's been great. I thought he's, I thought he caused him real problems as well when he's been playing against two really good centre backs, um, and he was, he was a menace. Um, but he's, as I say, look, he's much more than a goal scorer. I think you see the one he rolls. He rolls the centre back and hits the post. It's just a great centre forward play. Everybody says Danny Johnson gets you goals, but he gets you a lot more than goals as well. Um, and what he is is a real hard worker. Um, and he set the tone along with Sean Burn, all of them. They, they set the tone in that game, and we'll be looking for that for, for our 10 outfield players on Saturday again. Is it a positive problem now to have with Danny obviously on fire, Kane coming in, and also Andy Nelson there? Three guys up front. All capable of scoring goals, is that? Yeah, it? great. Yeah, look, it's 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 a great problem. Um, as I say, it's a competition between the three of them, and that, that goes the same for my strikers. Whoever's doing doing the job well, whoever's doing the job for the team well, scoring the goals, and they stay in the team. I've no issue whether it's even though I'll include Michael Cunningham in that. If young Michael gets on, gets his chance, and he's the one that's that's doing what we're asking as a team, then he stays in the team. It's as simple as that. There's no, there's no agenda. There's no favourites. There's no. You see that? I'm, 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 I'm more than happy to, to put what I believe is a, the best team on the pitch and, and go with that. We, 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 as a staff, we sit down and go through that every week. What a living can we pick to win this game of football? And again, you've shown kind of the weekend they're not fighting to put the young boys in there to to play. Not great performance here by Robertson again on on Saturday. Sundays. Yeah, I thought he was excellent again. Um, it's now just 
and it's a standard he's set he needs to keep hitting that I believe he will I'm delighted he's in the Scotland under 19 squad along with Josh McBake um, it's a great boost for Finn it's the first time he's been called up for Scotland so as a 16 year old being included in that under 19 squad and that group's a very good group it's a club we're over the moon for him um, because he, he thoroughly deserves that he's deserved that for a while in my opinion and I'm sure he'll go and give a very good account of himself when he's in, when he's in Spain with under 19s but Again, he's got another couple of big games before he can even look at that, but doesn't surprise me how well he done. It was a wee test from that one. You could say Aberdeen are, I can say they were the second best team in the country for a few years, the third best team in the country last year. And he went in and he handled that. Big crowd, big away crowd, and he handled it the way Finley Robertson handles everything.